using the Outlook calendar. Maybe you've read the book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll at some point in your life. Many people have, and it's one of my favorites. In the very beginning of the story, Alice is out wandering around one day when she sees a talking rabbit. Here's an excerpt from that classic tale. There was nothing so very remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late. When she thought it over afterwards, it occurred to her that she ought to have wondered at this, but at the time, it all seemed quite natural. But when the rabbit actually took a watch out of its coat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet, for it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a coat pocket or a watch to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it, and fortunately was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. Well, if Lewis Carroll had written Alice in Wonderland after the year 2000 instead of 1865, Alice would have probably been named Brittany, and she would have seen a talking donkey instead of a talking rabbit with a wireless handheld PDA device or an ultra-thin laptop running Outlook 2003. <laughs> Regardless, if the rabbit were using the calendar feature in Outlook, it would no doubt have been right on time. In this short and sweet nugget on using the Outlook calendar, we're actually going to lay the groundwork for the following nugget, scheduling appointments, meetings, and resources. We're going to look at four key areas. We want to understand all the different ways to view the calendar feature in Outlook 2003 and the essential information about the calendar. We also want to look at how we can work with multiple calendars. We want to look at how we can define our available time in Outlook 2003. And then finally, printing the calendars. Are you ready? Let's go down the rabbit hole. What you're looking at here is the uh, default one day view or look of our Outlook 2003 calendar. Uh, over here we have what's called the new button to create a new appointment. And this is the default object in your calendar is a new appointment. Now realize that there's really three different types of objects or items in calendars. You have an appointment, which is your default calendar item. And this really involves your schedule uh, and time. It doesn't require that you have any other attendees, any other people coming to this particular appointment, or any other resources. Your calendar is going to show uh, appointments here in the time slots that correspond to their start times. For example, the CBT Nuggets training session is an appointment. Uh, from 10.30 to uh, uh, through 12 o'clock, an hour and a half. Now, when you have an appointment that goes beyond 24 hours, that then becomes what's called an event. Uh, an event will be marked on our calendar, not in a time slot, but in a banner up here at the top of the day, for example, Tuesday, June 1st. Now, we don't have any events yet. We're going to look at events in the next nugget. Now, an appointment will become a meeting at the point you start to invite other people to it. And this is going to involve the coordination of their schedules and your schedules and scheduling resources like conferencing rooms and equipment and things like that. You can also leverage other tools from Microsoft like Microsoft Net Meeting, uh, media services, or exchange conferencing services as well in that. This area down here is what we call our date navigator. You can move from Tuesday, June 1st to uh, Thursday, June 3rd, just by clicking on this button right there, going back to it that way. We've also got what's called our time bar. Uh, this is called our banner area. The banner area, then up here we have what's called our day, work, week, month buttons. You can see by the day, by the work week, by the week, and by the month, the entire month of June. Let's go back to day, and of course you can choose uh, today as well. Excellent. As you can see, a reminder just popped up to remind me that I have a CBT Nuggets training session. Uh, start time is today at 10.30 a.m., so it's coming up in about 30 minutes in Training Lab 1. And I can go and I can open up the item, and it reminds me that this is Exchange 2003 server training, and we'll get back to this particular area 
In just a second here, we look at appointments, but I can, of course, choose to dismiss this, or you know what, let's hit the snooze button, and let's remind me uh, in 15 minutes. Let's talk a little more about this time bar here. As I mentioned earlier, the time bar is over here on the left-hand side. It shows up uh, hour on the hour, but these are actually in 30-minute increments because you have uh, 12 to 12.30, 12.30 to 1, 1 to 1.30. This is an hour and a half to 2.30, 2.30 to 3. So you have 30-minute increments by default. Now, the time bar is only going to show up uh, if you have a calendar display of six days or less. So the one day view is going to show the time bar. The five day or the work week is going to show the time bar. But once you go to the seven day or the week or beyond to the month, you're going to lose that time bar. Now we can change this from the default uh, 30 minute increment to something that more applicably suits our schedule by just simply right clicking on it. And you can see here, we also go back to what I mentioned earlier with the type of objects or items you can create in your calendar. An appointment, uh, an all-day event, anything over 24 hours, anything that involves other persons or other personnel, a new meeting request. It can be a new one-time appointment, event, or meeting, or it can be a recurring appointment, event, or meeting. And we'll get into this in great detail in the, in the nugget following this one. You can see now the default increment is 30 minutes, but if I want to change it uh, more to a schedule, maybe more like a, uh, a dentist office or something where you have just brief 15-minute uh, meetings, maybe you're somebody who uh, is going through the process of hiring a bunch of people, and you see people every 15 minutes kind of in a screening process where you could set this up on a 15-minute basis. And you can see you can do that here as well. If I scroll down, it, it starts to expand out my particular appointments because why? Because now I'm breaking it down into 15-minute chunks, uh, 8 to 8.15 to 8.30 to 9 a.m. If I want to change that and go to something that's more broad, like 60 minutes, I can do that as well. You can see how it affects and kind of uh, scrunches up everything here. So you can change this calendar time bar uh, to best suit your needs and to best suit the types of appointments, events, and meetings that you have that you use in your organization for your daily activities. Pretty cool. You might be asking yourself, why do these different appointments here uh, have different colors? Well, that's a secret. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this, I'm going to show you this here in a second. You have the ability to label each one of these types of appointments, uh, whether it's a personal appointment, a business appointment, whether you need to be prepared for the appointment. And I'll show you this here a little bit later. So there is a method to this madness here, this color madness. But let me show you right now the date navigator. This is kind of a cool feature. Again, it allows us to move from one date to, the, to another very quickly. I'm going to move from June 1st to June 15th. I can just click on the date there itself. I can also expand this out a little bit and go to uh, July or I can go to May if I need to go back and look at something that happened in a previous month or something that's more than 30 days ahead. And I can, again, uh, move back and forth very quickly. Now, it depends upon what view you're in, how this particular uh, date navigator is going to work. If I'm in a five-day work week view, and if I choose June 1st, which I'm looking at right now, and, of course, this shows up on the May calendar. I can skip over here and go to June 1st. If I go to back to the June calendar and go to June 15th, it's going to show me June 15th, but it's going to show me the work week uh, that June 15th resides in. I haven't filled all this stuff in yet, but uh, I will eventually. Now, realize if I go up to my view and bring down our old friend the task pad, and I showed you this in a previous nugget, if you bring in the task pad, which has a list of your tasks, which again can be tied or connected to individual appointments or meetings or uh, events, uh, your particular date navigator is going to move from the left side over to the right side above the, the task pad view. So keep that in mind. Now notice something else on my date navigator up here. I've got several days like June 1st, June 3rd, and June 15th. These are in bold. What is that telling me? That's telling me that only these three days have scheduled items on them. So I haven't really taken a lot of time to fill out all the different activities, appointments, events, and meetings for all the days in June yet. But the ones that are in bold mean I do have scheduled events on those days. So that's a nice indicator for you as well.
Now check this out. What if I wanted to see a calendar of all of the events for every Tuesday in June? Well, I would select my first Tuesday, June 1st, hold down the control key and click on June 8th, June 15th, June 22nd, and June 29th. Pretty cool. See, it shows me all the Tuesdays. Again, if I wanted to see maybe a block of dates, maybe from the 7th through the 19th, I could just click and drag over those, and it shows me that as well. If I'm planning on taking a two-week vacation, and I want to see, well, how busy am I uh, from the 14th to the 26th, well, there you go. I can pick and, and choose just that in my calendar and get a really, really effective way to see my different dates. And again, this is the date navigator. Hey, there's a reminder again. Like I said, there's that CBT Nuggets training session. I ch uh, chose this news button. Well, I think I'll go do my, do my training now for Exchange 2003, so I'll dismiss this, go do my training, and I'll come back and catch up with you when I'm done. See you in a minute. Well, as you already know, this particular calendar item is being displayed from this particular calendar folder in my mailbox. This is my Exchange mailbox. This is an Exchange client, Outlook 2003. I've only got one calendar item. But if I want to create additional calendars, which I might want to, maybe a personal calendar as opposed to a business calendar, maybe I want to have individual calendars just for shared items like meetings and shared events, maybe I want to have a calendar for a project-by-project -project basis. I can do this by going up to the drop-down arrow next to New and choosing a new folder. And By default, since I'm working in a calendar, the folder is going to contain calendar items. So I want to go ahead and call this maybe uh, on a project basis. I'll call this uh, Project X. This folder is a calendar items folder. I want to place this in the calendar uh, folder default uh, within my Exchange mailbox. Click on OK. And now I have a new calendar called Project X. And I can go in here now and I can create appointments, events, and meetings in this calendar. Now, it really wouldn't be fair for me to, to teach you all about calendars here, but not at least show you how to create one appointment. And we're going to spend a, quite a bit of time in the next nugget scheduling our appointments, meetings, and resources. But in this new calendar, let me go ahead now and just create one simple one-time appointment so you can kind of get your feet wet and see what's going on here. Let's say this one-time appointment is today, June 1st, at a 1 p.m. So I can go ahead and just double-click on that and bring up this untitled appointment box. If this appointment is a meeting with new hire, I'll type that in there. The location is in uh, whatever conference room, if I want to make this the break room, uh, conference room two. And earlier when I mentioned that they had different colors on those particular items in the calendar, well, those colors came from this particular label. And if I click on the down arrow here, I can label these as an important meeting, a personal meeting, a must attend meeting. And again, I can go ahead and say, you know what, this is a a business or important meeting and choose that and I'll get used to the colors eventually. The start time of this is at 1 p.m. but my uh, meetings generally take about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. So I want to allocate an entire hour for that. So let's say it's going to go from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., not an all-day event. Now, if you choose this option, all-day event, it takes this appointment and it moves it from the status of being an appointment to now being what's called an event. And again, that goes up to the top of the calendar there in that calendar view. Do I want a reminder for this particular meeting? Sure. Let's go ahead and get a reminder uh, 30 minutes beforehand and then uh, let's go ahead and give me a sound. I can make my own sound. Now, this particular show time as goes to the free busy aspect that I have in Exchange Server. And what I have as far as free busy is I can say during this hour, between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock, when I'm in this meeting with the new hire, this appointment, I want you to designate to the Exchange Server and to other users in my organization that I'm either free for this hour, which I'm not, I'm tentatively available for this hour, and I could choose that and say, well, you know, maybe this new hire is not going to show up, 
or just in case something more important happens, if I put tentative in there, if something of a more important nature comes up, then people realize that I could be available uh, if it's a critical issue, because I could always move this new hire meeting to a different time if I have to prioritize it with something else. But if it's a really important meeting, I could say, you know what, I'm busy or I'm just out of the office. And this free busy notification lets other people know if they want to schedule meetings and create events and appointments, what my status is throughout the day. When we use shared calendars, I can let other team members, other managers, supervisors, other employees know my status throughout the day that helps them uh, to create meetings and appointments to be more effective and more efficient. And it gives me the same freedom as well as I'm trying to set up meetings, team meetings, and interactivity in my organization with other employees. So this is part of the free busy. Now, if you don't have Exchange Server, I'll explain to you here in a second how you can still get a free busy server in your organization. Uh, in your environment, even if you aren't using Exchange Server. Then, of course, I can go in here in this appointment. I can type in some notes here, uh, who the person is that I'm going to be having this new hire meeting with. And, of course, if that person's a contact, I can actually link it to their contact, or I can place this particular appointment in the category, just like I could with contacts and just like I could with tasks as well. You're already familiar with that. We'll talk about the scheduling aspect of that in the nugget right after this one. Let's go back to a familiar area now under Tools Options, and we have some options for our calendar to help us define some of our time issues and also some of the options revolving around our calendar. I want to show you some of these areas. If I go to Tools and choose Options, of course, uh, just like Email, Tasks, and Contacts, I've got a calendar area for my preferences. Now, the default reminder right now is 15 minutes. That's what comes up on your default whenever you create an appointment. I could obviously change that for my default. Let's look at some of the calendar options here. If your work week maybe is one of those deals where you work uh, three uh, 12 hour shifts, for example, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or you work Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can adjust this calendar. Uh, for the work week option, just to show your work week, what your first day of the week is, maybe your starting shift, maybe you work a, a graveyard shift at night uh, from uh, 12 midnight till 7 or uh, 8 a.m. You can adjust this accordingly uh, to your particular work schedule. Also, as far as calendar options go, uh, you can change, look, look at this right here, the background color. If you want to change the background uh, color of your particular calendar, you can do that here. If you need to add special holidays to your calendar, this is the button you would use to add special religious holidays or maybe other types of special holidays that your company observes. In the advanced options down here, some of your time uh, options that you want to manage are, for example, time zone. If my headquarters, we'll call this HQ, is in the central time zone that I'm going to adjust for daylight savings time, but maybe my, I have an additional time zone for a remote or a branch office that maybe is in Arizona that I'll put AZ in here. AZ happens to be right now on a different time zone. If we scroll up here, uh, they're going to be on mountain time, but they do not adjust for daylight savings time. I don't think that... Uh, uh, Vermont and Arizona ever adjust for daylight savings time. I know Arizona doesn't because I lived there for several years. If you're working with different time zones, uh, you can add this to your particular uh, calendar. So you have that option as well. Keep that in mind for multiple time zones. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. Now I mentioned free busy. Again, your free busy options are alerting other users as to your status, uh, to the entries that you add on your calendar. You can publish up to two months of calendar free busy information. By default, this is being published uh, to my Exchange server uh, up to two months of information that I put into Outlook 2003, and it's updated every 15 minutes. But if you don't have an Exchange server, you can publish and you can use the Microsoft Office Internet Free Busy Service, which is web-based, and you can manage that as well. That's beyond the scope of this particular nugget, but you can do more research on that by just simply going up and searching for Microsoft Office Internet Free Busy Service, 
at www.microsoft.com. And you can also publish your FreeBSD information to an FTP server, uh, up to an HTTP web server, uh, or a file server. And you can just simply go up and say publish at my location. And you can put in the URL HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www, whatever that is, or the FTP using FTP colon forward slash forward slash, or you could just use a location on a hard drive somewhere, maybe the G drive or the H drive. So you've got uh, different ways to publish that free busy information. This is really is for group scheduling and group calendaring activities within your Outlook 2003 environment, either in an exchange situation or in other uh, platforms as well. I'm going to cancel out of here. Don't forget you've got the options area for your calendars as well. Like all of the other features in Outlook 2003 and Office 2003, we have some pretty powerful uh, choices for printing our calendars. And of course, to print, we just go to File on the Main Menu and choose the Print or Control P. And as you can see, we've got several styles uh, to print this calendar. Our daily style, of course, you can go to Preview, and you can get a preview of that daily style, what it looks like. It's got your tasks over there in the task pad. It's got a calendar at the top that shows uh, this month and the month after, and of course your daily activities. I can also close out of there. If I want to print in other styles, I'll go back to print, and I can choose what's called a trifold or a calendar detail style. I want to come in and take a look at these. There's calendar details. This is a nice way to view out your calendar, kind of an itinerary. And this is an excellent way to use, maybe if you have people that travel or you want to print out itineraries for people, you can use this option. So uh, knowing where to go to print is the main thing, but also knowing that you have several options and that you can preview these and set these up as well. You've got a tri-fold style uh, that you have as well, which is a very uh, effective and has a lot of information in it. Uh, you can see your calendar over here, your tasks in the middle, and of course, a more elaborate layout on a daily basis over here on the right hand side. So uh, go ahead and play with this, but printing your calendar also can be very effective as well. Put that in your briefcase, fax it to somebody, or just send that out or post it on a bulletin board there in your organization. All right, great job with calendars. Uh, we've got more to cover when we look at the next nugget in scheduling appointments, meetings, and resources in our Outlook organization. All right. In this CBT nugget on using the Outlook 2003 calendar, we covered four main objectives. First of all, we got a good handle on the calendar views and the essentials of using our Outlook 2003 calendar. We also worked with creating multiple calendars and multiple folders for different purposes. We also looked at defining the available time and other calendar options by going to Tools on the main menu and choosing the Options and then Calendar Preferences. And then finally, uh, flexible and effective ways for printing out your calendar information in Outlook 2003. I hope this CBT nugget's been informative for you. I want to thank you for viewing. See you in the next nugget.